everyone, welcome back to Anyone Can Quilt, including me. Today I am going to work on a hopefully quick sewing machine mat. So this is a mat that goes under your sewing machine and then has um, a couple pockets in the front so you can put your, maybe your nippers, some um, scraps, your threads as you're sewing and snipping uh, into those pockets to sort of keep your space cleaner. I'm actually making it a little bit more difficult on myself than I need to, but uh, I, we got this fabric in and I absolutely love it, so I wanted to have it for my pocket. So normally, to do a sewing machine mat, you just need a half yard of your back, a half yard of your front, uh, and then a half yard of batting. And then uh, when you're done, you're gonna trim it to whatever size you need, but that half yard is a pretty good gauge, depending on the size of your table, to give you about a six inch pocket in the front, uh, and then lay under your sewing machine mat. And then what's great about this is you can always, when you're done sewing, take it out from under your machine, drape it over, and it makes a nice little sewing machine cover. So I'm making this a little bit difficult because I wanted to, uh, rather than just use my backing, which you would just pull up uh, to sew your pockets, uh, I wanted to have this special panel that we got. Uh, this is, I think it's a Dame Paris. Uh, it's a cute uh, Parisian street scene that I thought was really cool and I wanted to have on the, the front of my sewing machine mat. So if you're going to be a little um, persnickety like me and you want to have a separate panel for the front of your um, pocket, then you need to just watch your directions. So this is my, this is what I'm using for my back. So I've laid it right side down so I can make sure I get this correct. And we know we're gonna sew it right sides together and I'm just gonna need a quarter inch seam. But I need to make sure because your motion will be, you're going to fold up and then just sew your pockets lengthwise. So I need to make sure when I fold this end up that it will show the seam going correctly. So that's why I'm just laying it this way, doing my double check, and then I will just sew this together here at the bottom, and so to create my full back panel piece. So I also, your, your pocket is gonna be about six inches uh, high, so I just cut six inches off my backing Cut this panel piece to be about six inches, uh, so I'm I'm not wonky when I go to put this together. So I'm gonna create my modified back panel piece, and then we'll go on to the next steps. I watched, uh, I've looked at a couple patterns, and I watched a video from Missouri Star Quilt Company. I you pretty much, I'm going to modify my back panel, put my backing on, make my sandwich, and just quilt that. Uh, and then we get a little cute when we do the binding, so stay tuned. Hi everyone, okay, so I have quilted, so I sewed my pocket piece here, uh, and I've quilted my whole piece. I just did straight lines um, spaced every so often. So the next step is to sew um, a piece of binding on whatever's going to be your pocket end. So since I know this is my pocket end, it's gonna be sewn onto this. Uh, after you trim up your quilt, you know, when you do straight lines, sometimes one end is a little bit wonkier than the other. So if you're just doing two standard pieces, uh, you can take a look at each end, see which one is a little less wonky since that's what you'll be flipping up and seeing. Uh, and sew your strip of binding to that. So I'm gonna sew, and again, I'm just using the standard. I took two and a half inch strip, uh, press it in half, and we'll be sewing that on. Okay, so I sewed my binding to what is going to be the front side, because I'm going to wrap it around to the back, but that's gonna be my pocket that comes up, so sew that part. So to secure the binding to the other side, we're actually going to use a light steam -a seam which is like a double-sided tape. You press one side, I'm going to press one side where the binding is going to be on my pocket side, and then bring it over, uh, tear off the tape side, and then press again, and it 
seals your seam without having to sew it. So you lay your binding tape here on the edge of the binding you've just sewn on that you're going to flip over. So we're going to iron that side to press that, peel off that sticky backing, flip it over and press again. So as you can see, I turned my binding over, the sticky side was at that far end, so when I rolled the binding over and pressed it, it sticks, and you just iron that again with your iron, and presto change it. You have an instant uh, binding seam without having to actually sew it. So you want to determine how long you want your um, pockets to be. I'm using six inches, that's why I purposely cut my pocket so that it would be a six inch deep pocket. And then all you're going to do is decide how many pockets do you want and how wide do you want them. And I'm marking, I think I'm just going to reuse my seams that I've already used for quilting. So I want a couple smaller ones and I want a slightly larger one to just put my little snips in so I can just clean that out periodically versus have to stop. Uh, so you're just going to go across your pocket and just sew however many pockets you want on this guy. That's what I'm going to do next. So once you've sewn your pockets, so I did I did a nice big one for whatever I made made to just throw in there. Um, and a couple smaller ones, hold a pair of scissors, uh, maybe a couple marking pencils, and then you're gonna go around and bind. But again, we're gonna bind using the uh, steam seam because you're not gonna be doing a lot with this mat. It's just gonna sit there. This is gonna hold it. And because you're not gonna be washing this thing really often, if at all, this is gonna last. It's gonna stick and you can move on to your next project. So then you're just going to bind your other three edges. Uh, normally you would start your binding maybe at the lower right of a quilt. You're not with this one because we've got the three edges. So I will show you how to get a nice starter uh, to your binding and uh, finish this up. So I need to go sew a couple of my strips of fabric together for my binding. We'll be ready for the next step.